And the fact is that, look, none of us or anybody is a federal inland revenue staff here that can identify exactly what the man owned, how much he's supposed to have paid. Let the institution justify this particular claim that Atiko has made. And that is the fact that why I said it's courageous enough to have presented, because he has presented it like, go verify. I have made this X amount of money. And you're talking about an individual who is an employer of labor, who has presented this X amount of company. You are even reeling out this particular educational institution that you have put up. I think, look, we need to be, we need to be careful the way we exempt things and make claims on individual. It seems to me that Atiku is giving a scare to the, 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 the ruling government. That's why you are attacking probably his interest, his financial. Let the institution come out and tell Nigerians what he has done. If he's found guilty, let deal with it equally because we are waiting on the line. We want to take over leadership of this country from those who have, been, who have corrupted this country. And if you have facts as a government, then you don't need to play to the gallery. Bring it out so that people can justify this means. So, Mr. Tanko, in your, in your view, when you, when you hear uh, the uh, level of stakes, we've heard in 2014, I recall the former vice president saying publicly that he's one of the largest single individual employers of labor in the country with a staff force of approximately 50,000 people. Uh, of course, the American University, Intel, some of these other companies. Is it not at all uh, of, of, of interest to you that an individual with that much wealth is, is paying only 10 million naira no, no, over the last is, three years? It is interesting to me. What I'm trying to say is that they have now been able to say, I didn't pay at a point in time. The claim was that I thought the man has not even made any declaration of anything. We have accused him of social X, 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 M, N, N, which is among us, some of money. Now he has placed himself on the front burner. He has said that he has to social But Mr. Tango, but can we justify that? In, 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 now, uh, can we justify that particular amount of money with what he said he has? Mr. Tango, Let the institution yes. now come out and deal I, with it so I, I that wanna, we can be free I, of I mean, it. It's important that we note here yeah. that these are not necessarily voluntary exercises, that indeed these are mandates given by anybody running for president of course. that you have to declare. Of course, he could be charged for perjury if he lies about it. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. We are lucky now that he has presented a document and said, this is what I have. But does that justify what he has as owner of a company? If he doesn't, then let the institution do their job and let me clear of it. Very, very quickly now, yes. before we close, uh, Mr. Akinsiju, one of the major, when we talk about the state of the nation, one of the major criticisms leveled against uh, the president's administration is that there has been a, 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 a lack of attention being paid to the health care, the health uh, sector and the education sector, human capital development internationally and locally. Uh, what are your thoughts about that in view of some of the issues facing the country today? <clears throat> in uh, 2015, uh, Oxfam and um, I think UNICEF issued a report on uh, human capital development and actually passed uh, uh, a conclusion of negativity on the Nigerian uh, uh, government in terms of inequality. Now, that survey, you know, was up, was between 2011 and 2015. That is one. Two, I was, I was, mentioning, I was mentioning the World Bank household survey on poverty rate. And that poverty rate, as, as of 2013, poverty rate was, was, uh, was defined as one, those people living on and below $1.25. And as of 2013, Nigeria had 86 million very poor people. Government was not concerned. Some of us were making it an issue mm. in 2014. Now, we have to close, please. So just round up your thought, please. All right, so what, what, what I'm trying to say, it is now that government is attending to the poor and vulnerable in terms of inclusiveness, in terms of access to education, in terms of access to health, in terms of mobility, in terms of boosting income and consumption. This is what the government is doing now. Uh, all right, Mr. Akinsiju, unfortunately, we, we have run... We, I, I just wanted to make up one word. Very see, quickly. It's very unfortunate. I hate hypocrisy in my life. When you are talking about this particular individual, when they were flying in his private jet, he was financing their political party, nobody made any particular issue. Now, today, Nigeria is the highest, poorest nation. Every Nigerian gets poor at every six, six minutes. 
and we're talking about a government that is leading the people. Look, government supposed to be the interest of the Nigerian people mm. first. And which we, okay. when we become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we would deliver to the Nigerian people, not going back and forth. When who we who are is the we you're referring to? Well, I'm talking about we, the younger generation. The younger generation okay. from the political party All want right. to get this Mr. Tanku, part thank you very much. Yeah. Mr. Akin Siju, thank you very much thank for coming on and sharing your thoughts uh, with us this morning. I have been speaking with two gentlemen. Uh, and that is Mr. Ni Akin Siju, who is the chairman of the Buhari Media Organization, BMO. And of course, Mr. Yunusa Tanko, who is the presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party, NCP. At this juncture, we throw it over to Lagos, where Niota is standing by. Niota. Thank you, Ajay. We still have Ilemon or Noja here of the People's Democratic Party. So the, before they rounded off in Abuja, the focus was on the income, taxable income of your presidential candidate. Why? He declared 20 million naira in three years. Is that true? Um, when <laughs> Mr. Akishiju's comments are funny. No, no. First of all, yeah, it is, is it true? true. 20 that's million naira. That's what he said. You saw the document. That's what, well, that's what he said. I didn't personally see the document, okay. but that's what he said. That's what is reported as well. Okay, and you think that's true? Yeah. Why do you think so? It's simple. We need to, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that we must do two things. One, we must um, vote for Atikot Bakar because he shows an understanding of the sort of business acumen that we need to create jobs at this time in our, um, in our social political history. And two, we need to teach entrepreneurship better in our schools so that we can get people living practical examples and they don't come on television and make embarrassing statements like the sort of statements that Mr. Akin Shiju just made on, you know, just before they came back. We must separate, and it's a legal principle founded in our corporate laws, built into our most fundamental corporate law, the Company and Allied Matters Act, that separates individual from the corporate structure. When you register a company, right, two personalities are immediately built. The individual personalities of the shareholders of the company or the directors of the company and then of the shareholders of the company, sorry, and then the juristic personality of the company itself as embodied by its directors. So when you say AUN, American University in Nigeria, AUN is a juristic person on its own separate and distinct from Alajat Kuabaka. So if AUN makes $100 million in revenue, that, has not, that is not Alajat Kuabaka. If Intel makes $100 million in revenue, that is not Alajat Kuabaka. What is his, which is taxable income, personal income tax, is the salaries or the dividends that are paid to him from the revenue of these companies. Now, the quick question is, has the FIRS come out to contradict that these are what his earnings are? Has AUN, has anybody come out to say that? Now, you're trying to calculate on the basis of corporate, corporate tax, but the companies pay tax. Has the FIRS come out to say that Intel's or, or AUN or any of his other businesses, Faro Water or whatever have you, have not paid tax? I mean, the, the, that thing where you make the mistake of accruing corporate income to the individual shows at the very foundation a lack of understanding of the processes that we need to create jobs in this country. Because these are people who have come on television to show us that they do not understand anything about corporate structure. All right, thank you very much. We've been speaking with Ilemona Onoja, a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much.